Stars online art community. We talk about art and art education and support each other in a positive collaborative environment. So what's going on this week is so last week I was on with artist Julie Mucca on her YouTube and Facebook channel showing her planner, something that I use and anybody that I coach uses better manage their life and more creative time. That's kind of where her set called create more creative time. So we walk you through plan and what is actually involved planning and kind of the ideas. And so what I have for you today is the video that we did last week on her channel. So what I do is go over right now to her channel and subscribe to it. So you don't miss a thing. She goes every Friday at um, central time to on YouTube and on so be sure to check and plan your week with Jules. So check it out every Friday at 9 a.m. Central Time, planning Jules where you create your time. So welcome to Planning Mindfully. And today we have a guest, Stephanie Weaver. She is a full-time artist and art business coach. So I put her URL down on the side there. So be sure to check her out because she's got an awesome community of positive painters and they're not just painters. They are all different types of art artists from charcoal and graph uh, graphite to oil painting, watercolorists, surface pattern designers, illustrator, Photoshop, photographers, you name it. And it's great community to get positive feedback and interaction about all things art from the business. And if you're not in it for the business, just for the learning. Uh, she's also a full-time art business coach and has years of experience from a project management background and risk management background. So she will help you get over all those obstacles that come when you just don't think you can meet your goals and, and make this a business. But you can with the help of Stephanie. So on to why we're here today, planning mindfully. I thought it would be fun. And really, I can't take full credit for this idea. I'll give that credit to Stephanie. If I start planning with guests, and so Stephanie and I are going to do this and see where it leads us for the next few weeks, and hopefully a lot of fun and a lot of learning. But through interacting together, I think we can expand on the knowledge of how we plan our days and weeks because we both plan very similarly. So anyways, hey, Steph, do you want to say anything? Hey, uh, well, thank you for having me on your show. I am so excited to be here and I'm a big advocate of your planner. I, um, when you become, um, when I coach you, you actually get Julie's planner because it's just probably the best planner that I've seen. I've been managing projects for like 20 something years, I guess. And, um, you know, I've got my PMP and all that jazz. And it's one of these planners that is, I think, really well designed for those who have the creative minds. And especially as entrepreneurs, we've, we've got to be able to move things around pretty easy. <laughs> and that's <laughs> very true. That. Uh, so I, I love this planner. So when you get with me, you're going to get the planner too. And um, so thank you for having me. I'm excited. Oh. I know. I'm really excited to see where this leads us. I think this is going to be a lot of fun and uh, um, oh, always better being able to interact versus me just talking to the camera week to oh, week. Yeah. Uh, it's only our third week, but hey, one week at a time and we'll continue to improve. So, so let's yeah. get started. So the first thing I like to do that I haven't been showing on the last couple episodes is just check out my vision board real quick and take a look at where I am. Now, I got a question for you. Yeah. I'm sorry. Is that okay? No. Yes, <laughs> okay. totally. That's why we're doing this. Okay. How did you get to your vision board so quickly? Like I always, I, I know we're using um, note shelf together and um, I always have to go, what I've been doing is going up here to this little paper thing and then scrolling up till I found it. How did you get there so fast? The tabs are clickable. Um, Bless her heart. I'm so pretty. Okay, hold on. <laughs> Why? This did come out last year because I wanted those darn tabs to show up and be clickable. So I just hit vision board. Okay, you, let me find that. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. One. there okay. you go. Okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a great question because I just assume everybody knows that, but 
not all books that you notebooks that you download are clickable like that so that's so true okay yeah the other little fancy dancy thing that you can do if it's not a clickable tab is you can hit you can hit the um two pieces of paper like you were yeah and then click edit and you can select a page um and you can share that page you can duplicate that page you can rotate it and then under more you can copy tag and move hmm. um the other thing is you can bookmark a page yeah. so you can go to see your bookmark pages so if you want to bookmark a page like i want to bookmark the vision page then so okay the two little pieces of paper you hit the little sliders and you say see bookmarked so that'll show you what you've already bookmarked oh, but if you that. haven't bookmarked anything yet or you want to bookmark something like let's say you want to bookmark something in your notes to go back like our um our one uh, one of the peer groups i'm trying to take better notes so i remember what people are doing each week so i can hold them accountable like they're holding me accountable so i just go to the plus sign and oh gosh i'm on the spot here am i gonna remember where this is bookmark page so i hit the little tag on the far right uh -huh. say bookmark page to green hmm. and you can give it a fancy color and stuff and you can give it a name so that's how you can bookmark a page. Okay. And you can also put tags on a page so that when you search for stuff, you can easily find it. But, you know, I haven't gotten that fancy yet. Yeah. I've done that in another notebook, but I haven't done it in this notebook. Okay. <laughs> After last year, I'm finding it hard just to even keep up with my schedule. So, or my tasks, just for whatever reason. So I'm just trying to get back into that habit again. But yeah, I just like to take a double check of, you know, reading a lot about manifestation and law of attraction and watching stuff. So I'm just trying to look at that more and more. Then I will go and I like to highlight my week in yellow. And oh my gosh, how is it the last week of January already? I know. So you highlight your week in yellow. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. Because they all start looking the same. And, you know, so it's just nice to have a quick little edit. And then the next thing I do is look at my calendar for the week and see what all I've got going on. So I know I have a meet. just seeing the top of my head. Sorry. <laughs> I'm like in it. Okay. So I, I did this thing last week where um, I actually made a color key because I have a really hard time remembering what I'm what my colors are for. So I found out you can actually do the selection tool and then you can copy it. And now I can bring it over here. Yep. And then just paste it somehow let's see there it is paste. yeah you told down the mouse for just a minute or two yeah or not the mouse the apple pencil so now i've got that in there so now i can try and do it and julie's handwriting is like way better than mine <laughs> <laughs> well another little trick to the handwriting part is zooming in it helps a ton because i have the little grid there so it helps keep you on on track yeah. a little bit Let's see. Now I forgot what my schedule looks like. Yeah, where's my schedule? Okay. Um, okay. We have a meeting at 9.30. Okay. So yeah. Okay. Oh, what's my color? So I also figured out last week that I can actually have special little, you know, I've got my color codes. Uh -huh. No, I've been working in your calendar for like, what, two years now? <laughs> and, and I'm like always I'm, I'm, I'm continuously learning um so anyway uh, I've got like a color code for other artists so when I participate with like other artists and do things like that that one is a particular color and I found out that you can create favorites in your color pens did you know that yeah man okay behind the time yep. 
<laughs> so, in so fact, that, now I have the problem. I have too many favorites, so <laughs> <laughs> pair, I need to pair it back again. Yeah. So you pick a color and add a little heart to it, and they show up in your favorites. So now I yep. can just go to my favorites, grab that color. All right. So on Monday, are you going to John Middick's um, live stream? Yeah, I was going to try to make that um, on Monday. I don't have anything else this week, so I should be able to. So there's my little. And I'll be honest, I'm one of those people that multitask on that. <laughs> I do too. I listen to it. And I mean, I'd like to get my color pencils out, but I left them at the mill. So good grief. You're already on Wednesday. Too. What are you doing? Huh? You're already on Wednesday. <laughs> okay. Anyway, um, but I have a lot of reoccurring meetings this coming week. I don't really have anything new this week. So, oh, and you go like, so your way of doing is you do reoccurring meetings and then you go back and do like, mm -hmm appointments right got it yeah that's probably a good idea let me see if i can figure out that All right, so I'm still in red. Well, that's great. I was on the wrong week. <laughs> Guess what? You can just select it all and copy it, <laughs> cut it, and paste it. Just bless your heart. Um, I'm having all sorts of pretty moments today. Yeah, I learned this last week. One of the things I was trying to do is also document all my unplanned things. Uh huh. So I've now have a black pen category of unplanned things, and that way, because I have, one of the things that I do when I put together my schedule is like all the things that I didn't get to, I try yep. to copy and bring those over. And it also makes me kind of reevaluate whether they were actually something I should be doing. Because just because you can doesn't mean you should. You true. Know? Very true. Yeah, like I noticed this week, well, I had the conference for two days this week. And then I just felt like playing and creating which I really didn't really create anything but I just didn't feel like doing anything <laughs> behind I didn't do my blog post for yesterday and um so I'm like well I'll catch up I gotta finish my newsletter for the week and stuff like that but it happens to the best of us yeah I have days like those. But you get so inspired by all this cool stuff you see and it's like, oh, I want to try that. Oh, let me try this. And that's more of what my week ended up being. <laughs> so we're doing this, do you, um, are you at a point where we can kind of talk about time blocking a little bit? Because I know we had that conversation the other day. Yeah. And I think people out there could possibly use a, um, some more information about time blocking because I, I think it scares people. I don't know. It's such an easy way to plan. Yeah. But you really have to know yourself in order to plan appropriately, I think. Uh, and I think that's like, you know, the, the, one of the reasons I created that little black category where it was like unplanned. Mm -hmm. maybe. Um, because like, when I look at, I'll show you last week's, last week or this week, depending on when you're looking at it, this is a hot mess, folks. Um, but it lists like everything that I actually have done 
And when you go through um, Julie's program where uh, we talked about uh, step number four, I think it is. And this, if you go to Positive Painters, this course is uh, available on the Lunch and Learn um, and Positive Painter Pro members get this. So one of the tasks was to assign durations to your tasks to complete your goals, right? Yep. So one of the, the big differences between, there, there's a difference between duration and effort. So most people think of, it's going to take me three hours to do this. Well, that's your effort. That's how long it should take you, assuming nothing else happens and you've got everything down, no interruptions and so on. That's assuming you've got those things. So duration is how long in the real world <laughs> those three <laughs> hours <laughs> would actually come into play because like, how often as, you know, as a mom, are mm -hmm. you going to get to sit there for three hours uninterrupted with what we have this pandemic going on with virtual school without your kids coming in there? Exactly. So those three hours duration wise might take you actually the full six hours in a work day. That's if you assuming you work six hours a day. Right. And so I know when we got to talking a little bit about that, like, you know, I do these videos, like even the lunch and learn video thing. It was an hour and a half actual video, but it takes three times as long to edit the videos. So that's like what, four and a half hours that you right. have to stand for. Well, considering processing time of your computer <laughs> and <laughs> download time. So that's actually a full day. That's a full six hours, nothing else getting done. Exactly. Um, so you got to kind of think about how long is it actually going to take you in the real world? Not your, you know, I got, I got three hours of uninterrupted time. Cause that just didn't happen. No, it doesn't. And the other thing too, is if you see something that has a duration of four to six hours that you know, it's going to take, or even two hours, who is going to humanly sit there oh, for yeah. that six hours and do it? No one is. So how do you break that down into baby steps? I'm all about the baby steps, you know? Mm -hmm. And when you're starting out with time blocking, you've never done it before. They actually recommend starting out in 15 minute increments. Yeah. Which to me now is a little aggressive. I like to plan in 30 to two hour blocks of time. And even with a two hour block, I'm going to plan in there like a 15 minute in quotes interruption or get up and use the bathroom, get a drink, you know, sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. Because that's the reality. So I'm really only getting an hour and 45 minutes versus two hours. But I know that mentally because I know myself. And that's why I say like with time, time blocking, I think you really need to understand yourself, which is why I think people don't like to use it or they feel like they've failed at it. But if you feel like you're failing at it, you need to break it down into more baby steps. Yeah. Smaller increments of time until you're comfortable with how long stuff takes you. But I remember when I started um, working full time for the first time and I was introduced to a thing called a timesheet because we build our time to clients and we were required to bill our time in 15 minute increments. And I kind of like freaked out. I've always been a really good planner. I'm like, you're kidding me. I got to track what I'm doing every 15 minutes Well, I can make phone calls and and. Well, there wasn't really email at that time, but, um, you know, and emails and work on this drawing all within 15 minutes for three different clients. Like, what the heck? But then it really taught me to really hone in on what am I doing? Where am I spending my time? And my husband, he has to keep his time in six minute increments. Oh, my God. Really? Is, yes. Oh, no. That's insane. That's, I was like, that is crazy. So I could not do that. <laughs> but when you really think about it, when you're drafting an email or responding or reading an email <laughs> or you're making a phone call, a lot of times those happen in six minutes. Wow. Yeah, yeah I could see that. I mean, dang. But it's yeah. like, okay, six minute bathroom break, go. No. <laughs> yeah, I know. But I mean, a lot of the stuff that you're going to work on is going to take longer than that too. So it's, yeah. 
you know, you're going to sit down for 36 minutes and work on something, you know, you're not going to, but yeah, I thought that was crazy, but that's really what time blocking is. And it's not worrying about the time it, of day, which is why there are no times in my planner. Hmm. That's why it works with your digital calendar that we all keep. It doesn't work against it because there's no times in there. It's just a block of time that you're trying to plan to. I'm going to sit down for an hour and I'm going to set a timer on my S-I-R-I or my (laughs) A-L-E-X-A, you know, or something and say, okay, timer go off in 30 minutes. I have 30 minutes to work on it and then evaluate. Okay. Do I have just like 15 more minutes to finish it? Am I finished with it? Or is it going to take another hour? When am I going to do that? Am I going to slide something else off my day to do it somewhere else? Or am I going to save finishing this for this day based on the deadline? And that's where time durations and effort all come into play, I think. Yeah. Well, I, uh, with the clients that I coach, it kind of comes into another way too. Um, when we start talking about pricing artwork Uh I always start out with like well how many pieces can you complete like in a week or how many pieces can you complete in a month and you know or how long does a piece actually take you like an eight by ten how long does it take and majority of time nobody knows and you have to have an understanding of that base component before you can move on to say how much money can I make a month yeah you got to know how many how much can you produce so there's a uh, an app you know, in addition to A L A L E X A, that I use, and it's called Focus Keeper. And uh-huh. um, so that way, when I'm painting, and I know I've got like an hour and a half before I, my next thing, I can have that going. And and then when it's done, I'm like, okay, I, I gotta, I'm done. And I right. know I can document at that point. I spend an hour and a half on X. And yep. then it builds to that. So it really helps with that. It Um, does. It really does help once you, and and then once you know it, you feel so good because you start accomplishing so much more. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, like my task list, I I think, I know I've said this before. I keep my task, an ongoing task list in Airtable Mm -hmm. and I have a duration column and a priority column so that when I'm doing my weekly calendar, I can say, okay, I'm going to work on X during this time. So, and and it's going to take me X amount of time to do it. So. Very cool. Yeah, it's it's fun. I don't know. I have a fun time planning. I I can't wait till you get stickers so I can start putting stickers in here. (laughs) I've started playing with it. I need, you know, I just, that's one of the things I've been playing with. And I'm like, okay, what exactly am I, you know, I don't know, not really what's my style, but just kind of playing around with how I want to create them. Yeah. And you know what I want the style of them to really be like, but I know I'm making some digital post-it notes. That's a, that's a must. And I already have, um, yeah, back. Yeah, I already made some watercolor. I know, I love those. And I made some watercolor blocks for washi tape. Ooh. (laughs) So I can make, and that's going to be kind of the first color palette of my series. But anyways, onward. (laughs) Oh, oh, yeah. Another reason why I like those little timers, like A-L-E-X-A. Uh huh. I have tasks that I do that I just dread. And so by putting, (laughs) I'm like, okay, for 20 minutes, I can focus for 20 minutes and get through this. And (laughs) and (laughs) I have those going like I am. um, Social media is not my favorite thing in the world. And I neither. It's just, (laughs) there's so many other things I'd rather be doing. And, um, all right, I need a different color. Okay. So I'll put like a, a 40 minute timer to address a week's worth of social media content.
Yeah. I try to, um, I've actually just started dropping stuff into um, Spark. Mm -hmm. And I'll do two or three here and two and three there when like if I'm on a phone call or you know like listening to um John's uh thing on Monday mm -hmm. I may sit there and do you know half a dozen uh social media posts during that time oh yeah So that way I'm not sitting down for an hour having to, to just focus on that because then I get so sidetracked. I'm double booked this week for a Wednesday. So I'm going to have to flip things around a little bit. Ooh, I need to finish my freebie for um, February. I haven't done that yet. Now, do you use each of the squares as like 15 minute blocks or something? Or do you use your squares differently as just guides? <laughs> I just, the, the squares are there. I completely ignore them. <laughs> oh, do you? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just like drawing things in, like, okay, well, here's about where noon is. Oh. And um, yeah, no, sorry. <laughs> no. I was just curious. <laughs> Oops, Some book. people don't use them, which is totally fine. Well, my handwriting is hard, having hard enough um, to stay nicely in the block. So I'm just like, um, <laughs> you know, playing along here. Uh, let's see. All right. So double book for that one. But you guys are handling, uh, you've got the Zoom meeting for next Wednesday. I think. Yeah. Okay, so that's my reoccurring stuff. And I think, oops. Oh, good. I'm so glad I'm on the wrong week. Uh, earlier, I was like, Tyler's got another with the dentist appointment. Because, <laughs> you know, whenever you do that, you lose. Pretty much like three hours in your day. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, all right, I have no, nobody's got hair appointments. Nobody's got dentist appointments. <laughs> Both kids are in, are in uh, braces. So it's just like- Oh, wow. Yeah, good times. Okay, so that's all I got for that. I use ClickUp for my task management. Yeah, I've been, I've been looking at that just because of the way the notifications work. Yeah. Which I know is why you switched to it as well. Yeah, I actually bought the the paid for version because after about like a, a month of using the free version, I'm like, you know, I, I'm they've earned my money because <laughs> this yeah. program is really just phenomenal. Um, and I'm not even using it at, at its full capacity because it's got the ability to track goals and do all that. And right now I've, I'm using Airtable to track my goals and um i just need to learn more and click up i think about it yeah that's the one thing i found is it was it's kind of a little it's quite the learning curve for me yeah i know, you know I've, I've got as far as creating the spaces in it um for the different goals i have and mm -hmm. in order to put the tasks down but I haven't wrapped my head around it yet. Or I've just wrapped my head around Airtable. <laughs> yeah. But I love the way that ClickUp, I, I, you're right. I mean, the way that it can send you the notifications is such a benefit. Yeah, and I like how like, I can actually keep track of all of the my notes in it. like. Um, I'm, I'm putting my processes in it. And one of the reasons why I picked it is because it can work with other people. Airtable can do that too, but they get yeah. notifications. So in my mind, I'm preparing for someday I'm going to have a virtual assistant. And yep. here's what they're going to take care of. 
and that way I could yeah, exactly. document the process in there. And so it's, you know, I know when they have it done and, you know, I don't have to hover. That's the plan. <laughs> right, right. No, I, I hear you. Um, okay. So let me see. My, what, what's your big focus for next week? Did you already fill out that pop? No, I didn't. And that's what I'm sitting here looking at because there's so much I didn't get done this last week. <laughs> oh, I really like, I'm, I need to be videoing. I, I need to get more videos out there, but I, I really want to do more videos about my process of my art and a few, you know, I'm still going to do some of the planning and stuff, but I really want to start doing more on my pro art process. But I think I need to get the ones for the planner done next week that I didn't get done this week. Yeah. And I really need to get my undated planner complete and a masculine planner. Yeah. No, I don't think I haven't even checked the my big focus is, and you're going to laugh at this. So, um, you know how you're supposed to have one big focus? <laughs> yeah. There's my finger. There it is. One, one big focus. <laughs> so, um, I've got like four. <laughs> That's a lot. <laughs> I know. And I've been trying to work it down to just three. And, um, but, you know, we've got the, one of them's going to go away like the end of this month. It's the, I think on the 29th. Uh, the giveaway that I'm doing right uh, winter landscape that project should be done this week too and then every week I've got the videos newsletter and what I'm calling ABC <laughs> it's art business coaching um, and then I'm working on that database I haven't really messed with the database yet so okay yeah. And you know, one thing that I really need to think about is, you know, my story, my, my emotional side to my business, you mm. know, as one big theme in the conference I felt was, you know, how are you connecting with people yeah. on an emotional level? And I'm not really good at that. You know, I keep a lot of stuff inside unless you're in my close inner circle, yeah. but um, so one idea I had this week that I may explore is, um, starting a little, you know, two, three minute video on finding inspiration. Where did I find inspiration this week? Hmm, I like that. Yeah. I'm thinking about maybe just going live once a week mm -hmm. and kind of talking about that. Cause I found so much inspiration at the conference, which, you know, not everyone thinks that you would do that at a conference. Uh, but then, you know, the week prior I found, I just happened to get into Pinterest. I try, I, you know, for, I was so addicted to Pinterest for the longest time, a couple of years ago, I just deleted that URL from my mind and never went to it. No. <laughs> now I'm slowly edging my way back into Pinterest <laughs> and, uh, and so, I'm working on the positive painters theme, the winter challenge. And my first one, I feel like it's total fail. So now I'm, you know, I winter in illustrations, I Googled or pin, I searched on Pinterest, whatever you call it. Mm -hmm. And so now I'm starting over, but I found a lot of inspiration from the different ways to show trees, to cars, to, you know, again, mm -hmm. I'm not copying anything, but I'm just trying to develop develop my illustration style digitally yeah you know I haven't drawn like that in years and here I am trying to draw like that now so I would still be interested to see what your quote fail was because <laughs> <laughs> I can guarantee you that like I would look at it and go holy crap she did that digital digitally <laughs> It's not all merging together. It involves a moon and it's more photography turned into a painting. And yeah. I'm just not happy with the way it's coming together. So, but yeah. I rendered trees in Photoshop. I rendered snow in Photoshop, you know, so I've learned a lot, but it's just not what I want it to be. Wow. 
I'd still like to see because that's one of those things like I, I know I would ask you how did you do the trees and how did you do the snow because I don't know how to do either any of those you know I'm like your photoshop novice you're the one that I go to whenever I have questions about it <laughs> um I, you know, was, I had a fail I was working on my winter one too I'm trying to do like a portrait yeah and because landscapes I got you know yeah uh, portraits I think I need work on there's a certain style that I'd like to achieve and uh -huh. um I mean I can do them but they look so smooth and I like the painterly loose um, yes. portraiture that I see that painters do and mine's just too smooth um I don't like it so, <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, I was working on one, um, I guess it was Monday or Sunday night and, um, Emily came upstairs and she was like, well, that kind of looks like an alien. <laughs> it's just the first layer. <laughs> like, yep. I know it's at the yeah. ugly stage. Trust me. <laughs> the ugly stage. And I was, but I was getting frustrated with even the material that I was using because it was just soaking up the oil and I couldn't get the paint to move. Yeah. And so she was standing stand there kind of watching me paint. And I was like, yeah, I, I'm just going to do this on a different surface. And she, <laughs> I took it and I just ripped it right up and all these little pieces. And she went, oh, why'd you rip it? And I was like, <laughs> it made me feel better. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. It's just, okay to do that. Yeah, and then I took, I put all the pieces on the floor and took a picture of it because I'm like, even though it, it wasn't going in the direction I wanted it to go, it was still a learning experience. Yeah, I'll eventually post a picture of it, but after I get it right. <laughs> it's so funny that you said that you tore it up and then, um, and then took a picture of it because one of the the uh, sessions that I listened to was an artist. He's a photographer and uh, it's Parker Fister. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things he does for his, he'll take some of his photography, he will print it out and then he'll take, he'll rip it at a specific spot. Mm -hmm. And then he'll take another piece of photography they did and rip it at a specific spot, combine them. Interesting. And take a photo of that. And that's his final piece. Huh. And well, it was really cool. Like he had one image, yeah, yeah. which I mean, so one of the images was a side view of somebody's breast, which I know sounds awful, but, <laughs> but it didn't look like that. Okay. Okay. And then, cause it's black and white. And then he had a scene, a landscape scene where it kind of converged down to the center and uh -huh. there was a road or something I don't remember exactly what was in the center there but it was a path of some sort and then so the way that he ripped the two of them when you put the other one the, the uh, lady's breast on the top it looked like this really cool mountain <laughs> okay <laughs> but I mean you had to see it to understand yeah. I know my descri description of it but anyway my point being is it's just Tearing stuff up can sometimes not only be gratifying, but it can turn into something else. So maybe I should uh, start keeping those because I, I did, I had, I had it on the floor for, I just threw it out today. And so I had it on the floor for what, four or five days. Uh -huh. And I had a hard time even thinking about throwing it out. And today I was just finally, okay, I'm, uh, it's going in the trash. But I kept thinking, cause like I ripped it in a certain way where both eyes were on separate pieces of paper and yeah. the eyes were probably my favorite part of the whole thing. And, um, and I kept thinking, surely there's something I could do with this and darn it. <laughs> there's, I mean, there's so much you could do with that, with the eyes being on separate pieces, Yeah. you know, and you do a whole nother piece and you combine two pieces, you know, two different faces with, I mean, just, just like so many themes and paths you can go down uh, anyway. okay next time so, keep it. <laughs> thing, make sure you put into your week planning <laughs> I, think I, I may try that you know where i find inspiration yeah so. i know that's actually one of the questions in the positive painters like this week is um like where does inspiration strike and when it does what do you do and 
like one guy, he responded with when he runs. And when I first read that, I was like, all I think about is, is it done yet? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> but I'm glad he finds it. Like there's, there are runners yeah. out there and I get it. Okay. What do I actually need to do? This is way more fun talking than playing. <laughs> I know it is. It's fun doing it. I mean, we, we go down these little rabbit holes and have squirrel moments, but that's okay. Yeah. Let's see. Okay. Review membership cancellation confirmation email sequence. Okay. Business. <sighs> that one's green. All right. Okay. Monday. I know we need to work on that. So that's actually due... videos for a newsletter. I can't draw a straight line on this thing to save my life. Um, it takes practice. <laughs> Let's see. also going to ask you all right I know in our, our when we did that lunch and learn we talked about some white space and kind of building in that personal time yep and then I'm reading that book rereading for like the fourth time and I did make it through it like the fourth time but anyway um the artist way you know how they talk about like the what is it the artist dates yes do you do that? You know, I would, my initial answer was going to be no, mm -hmm. but I do them with myself. Like today I was just so tired of sitting in front of my computer. And I think cause I sat in five days straight at a conference in front of my computer since it was virtual. Yeah. And I just got up for an hour and did a couple resin things that I've been wanting to try. Cause I'm still okay. trying to master that resin thing. So in a way that was kind of a date. Um, but it was with myself. It wasn't with another group. And with the virtual thing I've always wanted to start doing mm -hmm. was set up, you know, Thursday evening, you know, a, an art event on Thursday evenings. We all meet on Zoom, have our cocktail or our, our beverage of choice and just talk all things art while we're creating something. But I think they need to be themed. Yeah. You know, like the theme of it could be, you know, in two hours, create a winter scene using your medium of choice as an example. But I'd love to start doing that. Hmm. or you know in two hours sketch you know adamant objects from a classroom still lives from a classroom to with the theory of maybe making it into a surface pattern of some sort oh that's a neat idea yeah you know yeah those are neat ideas but i've thought about doing that for that very reason is to get those artist dates yeah. but i think Weekly is a little much. I think bi-weekly would probably be better. Yeah. But. Yeah. Hmm. Let's see. What am I doing? Okay. Oh. <laughs> okay. Tell you the best thing about the digital planner is the undo button. Mm -hmm. 
But it's like Wednesdays and Fridays are kind of my art days. I'm trying to set aside a couple days a week that I'm just doing art and nothing else, you know, just creating and having yeah. fun. I'm finding like Thursday mornings, like this morning, I went live on YouTube just to paint. Um, you know, I didn't really have a purpose. I was like recording it and then it's going to be part of the course. So mm -hmm. it's, you know, um, so I'm kind of painting and if some people want to paint with me, they can. And every now and then I say something. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm using like Thursday mornings is kind of like doing that multi-purpose. So I was working on the winter scene. I only got to paint for an hour and a half. Um, and we met with like, we met with our financial advisor. Yeah. Yeah. That's always fun. Yeah. Well, he makes it, he makes it entertaining and it was via Zoom. So that was really nice. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. That is nice. Um, I see. I'm actually further ahead on the planner thing than I thought I was. I mean, it's just now it's just a lot of marketing stuff that I need to do. Why is my pen not working all of a sudden? Well, a little stinker. I was thinking about this this morning. You know how like back in the day when you, you worked in the corporate office, uh huh. come Friday afternoon, you were just like, if anybody schedules a three o'clock meeting, I'm just going to kill them. And, yep. <laughs> exactly. and, and I still kind of have that mentality today. I'm like, I come about two o'clock on Fridays. I'm done. I'm just mentally yep. done. And I got to kind of I was in the car rider line to drop off Emily at school. And it was when that kind of started making sense to me, because, mm -hmm. you know, we go to school from like eight to two or eight to three, and then we're done. So we've been trained all of our lives to work from like eight to three. Yeah. And so now it's like, now we kind of got to break free of that habit. And, um, and I still, Fridays, that is one I just haven't been able to break, but I'll work Saturday, but I always take off Sunday, and usually it's like Wednesday afternoon, I don't want to do anything. You're right. So my work week has kind of evolved to what I feel like instead of what I should be doing based on corporate world and school world. I know that's kind of where I'm at too. And that's the other thing that I like about planning my weeks. Like I'm doing with a block. There's no, there's no time tied to most of these things other than appointments. Yeah. So if I decide like today, when I should have been doing something else I had on my calendar, which was a video, I did the resin thing. So like, you, yeah, I mean, I may do that. I may do the video on Saturday then. Mm -hmm. And be in a much better place mentally to do that because I took that mental break. Yeah. To yeah. do the project, you know? So anyway. It's freedom. It gives us freedom. Yep, exactly. Coco, my little pup wants up. Mm -hmm. Um. And I'm trying to leave more white space in my calendar than I normally do because I'm finding I'm getting more distracted or more off course the last two weeks. And I find my most productive day is Monday. Have you found your most, most pr productive day yet? Um, yeah, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, and then like Thursday and Friday are more creative. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because Monday, Monday and Tuesday, I usually have videos and video editing for uh -huh. um, newsletter. And then the, the new one that we added like a couple of weeks ago with the art business coaching tips. Uh -huh. so that's video for that is Monday. Both of those are like Monday and Tuesday. Yeah. And, um, 
so yeah and then like today what is today anyway so <laughs> so I'll, I'll sit down I find like when it comes time to write I have um I'm best in the morning yeah then, I am too in the morning like sitting with a cup of coffee and just and dictation is also awesome so sometimes I'll just like da, 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 da. <laughs> and then organize it later <laughs> yep. what are you dictating into like google docs or something um uh, if I'm on my mac it's got the um dictation built in yeah and with um pc uh, you can enable dictation and do it in the notepad because I don't have word but I haven't found a way to make it work in google so okay. I just use the notepad and it works really well and you know I've got a decent microphone that's this thing right and it gets most of the words right okay I would say that the Microsoft product is better than the um uh, Mac because the Mac doesn't actually put punctuation in it unless you specific specify whereas oh. the one on the PC really kind of it does a good job guessing <laughs> Windows one out I haven't I haven't used dictation in a long time I think last time I used dictation um, our company had some software dragon something or was I know it was a green logo I can't remember what it was called but um i'll just start doing that yeah it's uh, my mom is actually the one that got introduced me to it because uh -huh. like there are times i'll get these long texts that make no sense and because <laughs> <laughs> woven equals wolverine apparently and, okay. <laughs> uh, so, yeah but she's the one that introduced me to them oh. let's see what am i doing okay I'm trying to um, evaluate what I did last week that I didn't plan for that I might need to do this week. Okay, like these two tasks. So these two tasks, I need to make sure I handle again until it just kind of becomes part of my overall process. Oh, that's right. That's what I didn't do. I didn't do my one page planner guide yet. Okay, the other wonderful thing about a digital planner is the ability to copy and paste. Uh, yeah, buddy. <laughs> All right, I still want to, oh, so I finally, there's a database I've been working on um, for pricing. Yeah, uh, and I finally got that templatized. That was not on my list of things to do this past week, but it was something I started what like a year ago. Uh huh. And I've been I've been using it for two years, so um, two or three years since okay. 2018 is when I started it in Airtable. Okay. So now it's I got that templatized, but then. I got another database that I'm going to template, make it into a template that I want to find time to work on. And that one's the statistics, like keeping track of your um, goals. So maybe I'll do that here. Oh, that's funny. No, I don't think I have time there. Oh, 
Oh, let's, let's do that work on that. The things I carry over from week to week are definitely my procrastination items. <laughs> the third week I've carried over my sales funnel and I haven't done it yet. Oh, funny enough. That's one of my items. Well, sort of. It's um, on my task list every... Every quarter, I'm supposed to review the membership cancellation confirmation email sequence. <laughs> <laughs> so that one's on this week. <laughs> yeah, I really need to do it. I just haven't gotten to it. Yeah, I think, well, if you write best in the morning, that's probably when to uh, tackle that. Yeah. Um, I need to do some research on it too, like what it really needs to look like. Yeah. There's a good book um, uh, by Donald Miller. Uh huh. Called, um, oh, shoot, hold on one second. <laughs> I can get it for you. Okay, um, this one, there it is. Expert Secrets Underground Playbook, Donald. Oh, Russell Bronson, my bad. Oh, okay. Yeah, and I've, you know, put little tags in it, underlined it, it's, and it's got little drawings every now and then, so, you know, breaks it up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, where's your email sequence? Okay, I'll check that out. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good easy read. I think it was up until probably about page 200 is about when I was like, okay, yeah, I get it. Um, and then it just kind of gets a little redundant, I think. But mm -hmm. overall, really good book. Okay. Well, I think I got my week pretty well jotted out. I better not am. <laughs> I, I'm bad about filling out this next page, like the uh, connect with and calls. Great. Yes, calls. I know. I've been bad about it too this year, but it's there and I'm going to get better. Yeah. Okay. I mean, my goal for January was to get back to actually planning my weeks. So I got away from it with the pandemic and losing my mom and everything last year that now I'm trying to get back into it again. Yeah. Yeah. Makes you feel good. Yep. Makes you feel accomplished. So. I feel pretty good about this. I, I just need to probably come up with an uh, affirmation. Last week it was just be patient. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'll do a little more research into that one. <laughs> I feel like I need to be more profound, you know. Yeah. Well, I guess that's about it for this week. Yeah, this was a lot more fun than normal. My yes, normal it was. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it'll be a lot more fun for the viewers too. So I appreciate you stepping in to be a guest this week and and next, and we'll have another fun topic picked out for next week. Yeah. Uh, and it, I just want to tell everyone out there, you got any questions, be sure to jot them in the comments. We'll be happy to answer what we can. Uh, and again, you can always reach out to me at hello at juliamstudios.com. Be sure to check stephanieweaverartist.com out. And if you need some great coaching, she's the one to go to. And until next time, plan my